All right, one more time on a Sunday evening from Cold Creek in Lafayette, Colorado, here for the title match of today's JBT event. We had two first-time winners yesterday. We're going to have two first-time winners today. It's all four of our finalists do not have a JBT title, and the oldest finalist out of four of them is all of 15 years old. And the guy in lane three right now is not the 15-year-old, believe it or not. Raider Ramsdale's only 14 years old. He's a big guy. Looking for his scratch initial title. He opened in the first, struck in the second, so he can even find a way to double here on the third. He likes it. What a flat 10. On the left, this is 11-year-old Casey Kratz. She qualified 15th out of 16 for the bracket style match. Boy Field has won three matches to get this point, but he's... She is up against the number one seed, Nico Giambri. And Nico's got to make up 63 pins in this game to tie 64 to win the title from the one seed, which is hard to do. Match play, lots of different pitfalls. Every one of them going nine out. Two opens and three frames for Raider. Puts him behind the eight ball early. It's Casey elects to kick the field goal instead. We'll get you a job here in Denver if you're not careful. Colorado record for us, 102 bowlers started today. Down to just four, Nico owned this tournament, but he's got to win one more game. I told him the handicap difference in this match and his jaw dropped a little. I said, now forget about it. And that's the best advice I can give him. It does you no good to worry about all the pins you got to make up. He's been ahead of her all day long. He's got to do it. That's Jay Luhan over there, who's the number three seed going in. He is the old man of the bunch at 15 years old. He is the only one with any kind of JBT title. He won two handicap titles as a much younger kid when he lived in San Diego. So we're talking seven, eight years ago. He won a real youngster. So looking for a scratch win now that he's in Colorado for quite a few years. He's already caught the break of the weekend by being here. We'll tell you more about that as the match goes on. Now he's got a tricky little 247 to show that. has no problems with it. Mirror image of that is the 3610. That's what Nico's got his hands full with. Let's cross lane and look out. Chops it off. Yeah. You miss your makeables when you're the one giving that much handicap in a single game match. However, Casey has only marked it once. That was a first frame strike. That ball's going to stay wide to the right. Hold on, 66. That was a long time ago. We had 8, 9, or 10 on the pair at various times today, which means uh, it's a miracle there's any oil at all left on the lanes. About route 29 by now. Pretty shot from Diego to get that carry. Remains hit by 20 pins as a result. Casey's got herself a makeable spare. She's made the top four with us, but does not have a win, and that's close. And she gets it. There you go for her second mark. Raider does have one mile high title. The other two are here in Colorado. Long time tour here in Colorado. So newer kids on the block. And Casey follows up that spare with a strike. That is huge. Spare gutter doesn't help her a lot. Spare strike, especially when Nico open, helps her. Nico's got to take his time and just bowl his game right here. He's been so strong all day long. That does not break up the split. In big trouble here in the middle frames. Get your two pins here, youngster. Find that strike line again. Came in at 164 average. She qualified first at plus 135. Seven or eight of the nine games today over that 164 average. The other one was right on it, a high of 224 scratch. That was way back in game one. He will gladly take that Brooklyn hit right there as he needed a strike to get himself back together. You know, Raider shed three pins of count there with that 6 9 10. Tour takes a week off and rolls on to Laughlin, Nevada. And then uh, non stop for about five months on end. Right through Memorial Day is the next weekend off after that. Third consecutive good frame for her. 
Even six out would be a lot of pins for her off that strike. Just a 94 average. And she bowled eight of the nine games over that, including the other game right on that 94 average. Similar paths again there, the one and 15 seeds. So it's still six out. It's gonna give her 84 through seven, which gives Nico a 23 pin lead. He's gotta make up 60. His next shot with that strike work is gonna be huge. Oh, and speaking of huge, Diego breaks up that split. Diego lost a close match in round one to Chloe Keelick, which doesn't make any sense since he's still bowling with Chloe. He's from El Paso, which is not close to Denver, and she had a fight that she could not change, so she had to self-disqualify, and that gave Diego the uh, break of the week with the free pass, which he took advantage of by winning the next two games. The a semi-final win over Tyler Close with a 260 scratch effort to get this far. I told him after that Chloe thing to take full advantage, and he certainly has so far. And that's a great spare for Casey. That was not an easy one. Nico's got to forget that and find a way to strike here in the eighth. This will be his high finish by far with this, regardless. Unless the first will do for him right now. That's pretty close. Oh, and he gets the runaway broken. Any way they can fall, he will gladly take it. Take your time yours. when you're newer to this environment, the, especially the younger kids, the natural thing is to rush through this, but you gotta do that pre-shot routine that all the scratch kids do. And man, Diego looks like a uh, man on a mission right now. He's still got the U17 to play against top qualifier Nathan Harnett, who's been waiting in the wings. Nate from California, good thing there's an hour time change at least. <laughs> He ain't gonna get home anytime soon. Another big shot for Jump. Doesn't get the third straight. Oh man, Raider like that ball. And he catches a big break. Dueling good breaks, but it's Ramsdale who trails by 24. Came in 20th in junior gold this year. That's against a couple thousand dollars, so that's a great finish for him. Bears. And 63 is that handicap difference. What an important shot here with the spare working. What kind of count can she get? It's going to be a good one. It's so hard when you're your opponent watching, you know, a younger boy, you have no idea what she's going to get. That ball takes forever to get down the lane. <laughs> she's sitting there. Pretty shot from Raider there. Plenty of time left in his match. That's a seven frame strike. Tricky 310 to go at. I hate 310. She's going to give this one a whirl, though. Oh, and she makes it. Wow. How about that? She's going to bowl one of her higher games of the day here, but it's not done yet. She's got another count on a spare to deal with. But what a wonderful 310 conversion. My goodness. She's also a figure skater. She's won awards in figure skating as well. Obviously, looking right in bowling as she comes up with a strike in the tent. Man, she's bowling 94, 100, 114, 100, 116. And she's going to come up with a 140 game here, which I think is going to be plenty, right? The best Nico can do is 179, giving 63 back. Yeah, it's over. Casey's going to win. What a time to come up with a big game for her. That six out in the seventh gave Nico a chance, and all she does is stay clean the rest of the way to take it away. Yeah. Tough for Nico, we go great all day long, but uh, any age, any skill level, handicap tournament, Casey comes away with it. She might make this too. No. This is for one point stretch. Meanwhile, the Luan train rolls on and on. Well aware of his own records. Nico, I'll give you all the stickers I got left in my suitcase. You make it. <laughs> Every time I say crap like that, they go and make it too. So let's see if he can pull this off. Why not? Go ahead and make it. Big shot for Raider. Oh, he gets super lucky. Make it. Oh, I know he's not happy right now, but he was brilliant all day long. Casey Krantz is our handicap champ. 
focus in on the handicap, uh, the scratch rather finish here is that huge break for Renzo gives him a double which he needs right now. Oh, instead of consolidating on the big four, there's a lot of friction in this house anyway. We said the pattern is disintegrating quickly. One through four seems to be some of the trickier corners of the house here, too. It's going to pray here. This one is just about going to follow the day here. Well, so you're a. Uh, you're a young 15-year-old gentleman here, and you got the break of the world with Chloe leaving out. Chloe is, I think, 16 or 17. What gift does Diego buy Chloe right now? I mean, for me, it would be a ribeye dinner or something. Uh, uh, Louis Vuitton. <laughs> Diego has been very close to winning a couple times in the past. He is vocal about it that he wants so badly to win and those hands in the air indicate that he knows he has done just that. Chloe's somewhere in the air over uh, truth or consequences right now <laughs> making somebody very happy. Someone's been here for nine hours and has about had it. Uh -huh. Bear strike for 220 something here and walk out of here. Finally, a JBT champ. So, Diego first scratch, Jackson first scratch, Casey first handicap, Kinley yesterday first handicap. Girls went to Chloe over uh, Callista. U17 will be determined while we're uh, announcing our finals. No shame in that. Fantastic. Like the first time in ever, right? No, they always. Yeah, they always. Is that right? I'm trying to get a Raider Denver joke going on here, and I haven't really fully formed it. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. It's a weird season. It's a weird year. And how about a nice hand for your scratch to be up today as I finish with us, Raider and Ransom. In the handicap division, your runner-up was the top seed and was absolutely fantastic all day. Give him a nice hand, won't you, Nico? Two first time winners you yesterday and two first time in this division winners today. In the handicap division, she comes up with a huge game for her to win her first career. JBT title, Casey Kranz. In the scratch division, your champion won a couple of titles as a handicap bowler when he lived in California a long time ago. And he ends a long journey for that first career scratch division title, Diego Wuhan. So folks, here's the setup. We're going to get all these finalists right away over to the banner, if you would. Nathan and... Diego have to bowl the U17, and we'll do that on one and two, so Nathan, you can head over there. Diego will do the pictures, then you come back over to one, one and two, and we'll take care of that. For those who are not sticking around for U17, thanks again for being here. Be sure to check out the website, YouTube, and Facebook.